Good evening. I turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 119. Psalms, chapter 119. And we will see from verse 65 through 72. Verse 65 through 72. And for the reading of God's word, I request you to please stand. And the word of God says, Thou hast, dwell, thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy state teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Amen. Amen. Father, we ask you to bless this scripture, O God, and even as we meditate upon this scripture, we pray that thou will teach us and edify us and encourage us. May all be done for thy glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So we will be seeing absolute, uh, we will be seeing in today's um, message, I, do, I still don't have a title for this message. Uh, so I'm just having a lot of things in my mind. What should I put in this? Uh, but maybe the the best thing would be to say uh, absolute satisfaction in the word of God in the midst of perversions. Okay, uh, satisfaction in the pure version in the midst of perversions. Okay, so maybe that we can say. And so what we are seeing here, where Psalm 119, when you read. Uh, you know, when you read the whole Psalm 119, you see, um, you see that uh, um, this chapter, Psalm 119, exalts the Word of God. It speaks about the Word of God and several names have been used for the Word of God. Such as Thy Law, Thy Commandment, Thy Statutes, Thy Decree, Thy Word. Okay? So, so many things, so many words has been used to, uh, uh, to, uh, to speak about the word of God in this very chapter. And in this chapter, we have 176 words altogether. Okay, 176 words altogether in Psalm 119. Now, there was a man, uh, a great missionary to Africa, and his name was David Livingstone. What was his name? David, David Livingstone. Um, Livingstone? Yeah, Livingstone. That's right. Okay. So, when he was a small little guy, you know what he did? He memorized, he memorized when he was eight years old. Okay. When he was eight years old. He memorized Psalm 119 from verse 1 through 176. Just imagine what a genius he is. Okay. So that was uh, Livingstone. You know why he memorized? Because there was a competition and they said, if you would memorize and give all the words in Psalm, 100, uh, Psalm 119, we will give you a King James Bible. And for that he memorized the whole chapter and he won the first prize, the first place, and he won the King James Bible as a gift, uh, 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 as an honor for his hard work. Now that is a great testimony. Okay, so when we come to Psalm 65 through 72, there's something that two verses in 67 and 71, when we read it, speaks about affliction. Okay, the word afflicted is used here. And so the psalmist is rejoicing in God and saying, Lord, I thank you for afflicting me. How many of you would even say, Lord, thank you for afflicting me? 
So, so uh, we, we don't find today Christians who do. If some problems come immediately, we would see today people complaining or murmuring against God and against God's man. Okay? But we will hardly see somebody saying, Lord, I thank you for this affliction in my life. Very oddly. Okay? When some struggle come, oh, we keep blaming. Oh, it's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. And we blame others. That's bad. That's not what Christian life is. You know what Psalmist did? He thanked God for the affliction. He said, Lord, I thank you. Okay? So when we go, this is called chastisement. When you go away and do things that God does not like, and then what God does? God chastises you. God chastises you. If God is not chastising you, then you are in a wrong road. Okay? Either you are not saved, if God does not chastise you. You can think for yourself that you are saved and go to hell. Okay? But if you are a child of God and you are not living right, then God will chastise you. Remember that. So in verse 65 we read... Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. So he is praising God, he is thanking God and saying, Lord, I thank you because thou hast, dwelt, thou hast dealt well with me according to thy word. Okay, whatever the word says, O Lord, you have not gone outside the word, but according to the word, you have dealt with me. You have chastised me, you have afflicted me, you have blessed me, you have taught me, you have built me up, you have strengthened me, you have comforted me, you have disciplined me, you dealt well according to thy word. Amen? Amen. You see, a spiritual man, a spiritual woman who is having a very close walk with the Lord in a daily life, you know, that kind of people are the one who will stop complaining and start thanking God for what is happening in their life. Oh brother, I think it's because of you, you know, all this thing happening. Sisters, because of you, all this thing is happening. And we keep, we keep pointing out each other. In this world of Christendom today, you know, there was a man who went to an office, he dressed up very well, he went to an office and uh, when he went inside the office, he got some, yeah, the office started stinking. Okay, the office started stinking and, and he, it was very bad. And so he, he called all the staff, he called the pune and every say, hey, what's, what's the problem? This, uh, the whole room is stinking, just see what is dead. They thought some rat is dead and it's rotten over there. And everything they checked and there was nothing, there was no problem. But they got some smell. And so the, and one fellow, you know, the fellow who came in, he, what he said, was, just check your, you know, check your socks. Or check, or, you know, check everything. Something is stinking. And so this fellow started complaining and murmuring and trying to point others. And everybody checked everything. There was no sting. Finally, he checked his socks. And it was his socks that was stinking badly. Amen? Amen. That is it. His socks were stinking and he was blaming others. And that is exactly what we see in churches today. We see in churches the same thing. We keep complaining and pointing out and pinpointing this and that. It's because of you. It's because of them. It's because of these. Instead of sitting and instead of saying, Lord, thou hast dealt well with thy servant. O Lord, according to thy word. I am wrong. I'm sorry. Lord, please forgive me. That should be our attitude, dear friends. That should be our attitude. And that is what God expects from our life. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I have believed thy commandments. Amen. Yes. You see, he is a believer of the word of God. And a believer of the word of God is always willing to learn. You see that? He's not going to correct the word of God. He's not going to change the word of God. He's not going to make it easy. But he's going to come to Christ and say, Lord, you teach me thy word. 
Today we find people, okay, we'll have a new version because that is difficult. So we'll have a new version that will become easy for you. You see what, you know what? Today the world does not need a new version. They need a new, they need a new heart. Amen? They need to be saved. We don't need to change the word. We should allow the word of God to change our life. Amen? We should not correct the word of God. We should allow the word of God to correct our life. Amen? Amen. That should be our attitude. But today, instead of allowing the word of God to teach us, instead of allowing God to teach us the word of God, you know what people will do? They will change everything. Oh, let's change it. Let's change, make it easy. A new version. NIV. New international version. Not really Indian. Oh, somebody said new Indian versions. Okay? I call it not inspired version. So all these new versions today. Instead of coming to God and saying, Lord, you teach me your word. Teach me your word. Teach me your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. A believer of the word of God will ask God to teach him. A believer of the word of God will sit under the teaching of God's word. A believer of the word of God will open the Bible and study God's word and ask the Holy Ghost to teach him. That's the character of a believer. He is hungry to learn. He doesn't say, I know everything. He says, I want to learn more. Teach me, Lord. Teach me. Verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. You see what happened to uh, the psalmist was, he went, before he kept the word of God, he was, you know, he just went away as he wanted and lived a life as he wanted, became miserable and then God afflicted him. God afflicted him. And so he's confessing, Lord, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, what is but now mean? After I got afflicted, after I was chastised, after I was disciplined. Now have I kept thy word. Amen. Amen. You see, you and I are called to keep God's word and study God's word and believe God's word and not to change God's word or not to correct God's word. This is all those people who are changing God's word today who does not want God to teach them, but they want to change the word of God. So they will have a new versions and they have a new things, everything new, 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 new. Thank God for afflictions in our lives. That we may stay in the right track and the right path and keep focus, keep our focus on Christ. When God afflicts you, you don't get corrected and God says, okay, forget it. And your life becomes miserable. Harden your heart. I'm right. I know everything. I'm fine. Everybody's wrong. I'm the only one right. I'm close to God. God is so close to me and everything. Hey, come on, that's wrong, that's satanic. Okay, God wants us to come in the right path. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, the word of God says. This is exactly what happens. When God does not chastise, we want to do whatever we want. Thank God for chastisement in our life. My friends, brothers and sisters, our, our, our thoughts and our attitude should be, Lord, if I'm wrong, please correct me, chastise me, afflict me, that I may walk in the right path. I may walk according to the word of God. That should be yours and my prayer. And if that is not yours and my prayer, you are going to go in a miserable track. Bad. This is beautiful. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. You see, when God afflicts you, you become humble. When God chastises you, you become submissive. When God deals with you, you become lowly and meek. But if God does not put his hand on you, you become proud, arrogant, 
rebellious, stubborn. See what you find in David's life? He became like a, like a clay in the hand of a potter. The potter can do whatever he wants, mold it and use it as the potter wants. You and I ought to be like that. Lord, here am I. Afflict me when I am wrong. Take me on the right path, that I may walk properly, that I may bring glory and honor to thy name. Affliction is a must, my friend, in our life, that we may keep our focus on Christ. And then he says, Thou art good. Thou art good. He is not complaining against God like the people of Israel. Thou art good. And do us good. Teach me thy statutes. Amen. Amen. Teach me thy statutes. He is not saying, Lord, thy word is hard and difficult to understand. So let me make a new version. He is saying, Lord, teach me thy statutes. Teach me thy statutes. That should be yours in my prayer. Not to correct God's word, but the, allowing the word of God to correct our life. Amen? Amen? See in verse 69, what happens to those people? Who are the ones who correct God's word? Who are the ones who do not like God's chastisement? Who are the ones who think that they are fine and everything is okay? The proud has forged a lie against me. These are the proud people. Because they think they are doing some favor for God. Favor for God. Oh, you say God is, is... See, so they are trying to change the word of God. They, they try to... You know, when you change the word of God, you are a proud person. As so many people today, so famous so-called, like James White and John MacArthur and... and, and uh, there's so many clowns in the circus today who are changing the word of God. They are proud people and they are liars. The proud have forged a lie against me. That's the Roman Catholic Church. A church of liars. A church of harlot. Lies, lies, lies. That's the Jehovah Witness. That's the Mormons. That's the Seventh-day Adventist. Changing the word of God. That's the Christian sign. That's the unity signs. That's, that's all the cultic. They are proud. That's charismatic. Proud. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precept with my whole heart. Amen? Amen? A humble, a dedicated, a submissive Christian is going to say, Lord, I know it's difficult, but I'm going to believe thy word, and I'm going to keep thy word in my whole, in my heart, in my whole heart. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to believe thy word, and so you teach me, Lord. But the proud is going to say, hey, come on, let's change it. Let's make it new. And they made the whole Bible a lie. That's what the NIV is. It's a lie. That's what the NASV is. It's a lie. That's what the New World Translation It's a lie. That's good news. A lie. A new loving translation. It's a lie. The, the, the new, or the TNIV. That's lie. Everything is lie. This is the word of God. The King James Version. Amen. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precept with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease. You know what? That's another word for proud and pride and arrogance and rebellious and stubbornness. Their heart is as fat as grease. What happens to the grease when you put your hand in the grease? What happened? Huh? Slippery? Sticky? Yuck! Right? That's what it is. Proud. Their heart is as fat as grease. But I delight in thy law. Amen? Amen. Satisfaction in the pure version of the word of God in the midst of perversions today. In 71 he says... It is good for me that I have been afflicted. How many of you ever told, it was nice that God afflicted me. It was nice that that happened in my life. It was good, you know, that what God did in my life, otherwise I would have gone away. 
How many of you really said that? It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. Amen. Amen. God brings affliction in our life that we may learn more of the word of God. Not sit at home, but learn God's word. Amen. Amen. I didn't say read, read what the word of God is. It's good for me that I've been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. This is true confession, my friend. This is true exaltation. This man here, the psalmist here, is it's very he's thankful to God for the affliction. He's thanking God for everything. Okay? He's, he's not complaining against God, he's not point, pinpointing others. He's showing his absolute satisfaction in the pure word of God. He is a believer of God's word. He is a man with satisfaction in the God's word. He is a student of God's word. He thanks God for, and he seeks God and he praises God. And he is saying, God teach me thy word. It is the proud that forge a lie against the word of God. It is the proud that forge a lie against the man of God. It is the proud that complains and murmurs against God. It's good for me that I've been afflicted. I love this. That I might learn thy statutes. Wow. And then it says, Thy law, the law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. What is more important to you? What is important? Today people are running behind money. People are running behind health, wealth, and people are running behind everything. But here, after being so rich, yet he says, The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Because this gold and silver, this wealth and properties and all this holding up does not give him any satisfaction. All satisfaction what he got is in studying God's word, in knowing God, and walking in His path. Amen. Amen. When you walk in the footstep of the word of God, when you sincerely seek God, Lord, teach me. When you say, Lord, I thank you for thy word. Let thy word correct me. Let thy word teach me. I am the believer of thy word, Lord. I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to be a proud I want to believe your word and I want to sink myself in the word of God. Lord, afflict me when I am going away. Afflict me when I become proud. Afflict me when I am in a wrong path. Bring me on the right path, Lord, that I can praise thy holy name. Here the psalmist says the same thing. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Stay close to the word of God. Be the believer, not the doubter of the word of God. Thank the Lord for what he has given you. Magnify the King James Bible. Magnify the word of God. This is holy, this is pure, this is inspired, and this is preserved. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray?